Hello everybody, this is Angel Arts and welcome to another brand new Let's Play. This is Let's Play Solstice. This is another visual novel game and you guys know how much of a guilty pleasure that is for me. I wanted to give a very special shout out to Persephone's Underworld because uh, this game was actually a gift from Persephone. It was a Christmas gift to me in addition to a game that she wanted to um, give to me as a commemoration of my 10,000 subscribers milestone. So again, huge shout out. Thank you so much, Persephone, for um, being so thoughtful. According to her, uh, this visual novel is right up my alley. So I'm really excited for it. I don't really know anything about this game. I've never heard of it before. Um, I saw a little bit like parts of a trailer. I was trying not to watch too much of it because I didn't want to spoil anything for me. But um, what I did end up seeing, the little stuff I did see in trailer, I thought that the art style was really cool. The um, characters looked really interesting. Um, and uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. So let's go ahead and just jump right in to a new game. She's really pretty. She's really pretty. If only that caravan driver actually did what he was paid for. I have to turn around, you know. I have a wife, you know. Oh, she has a wife. Where I come from, his wife would be ashamed, you know. And the chancellor. I wonder when she last did any actual field work. I bet she's lounging in that big warm chair of hers right now. On a thick, warm carpet. Bloody odds, is it freezing? But I can't give up now. Human lives and our reputation are at stake. Besides, it should be right across this valley. Wait, there it is. The Jewel of the North. I love, I love the art style of this, this visual novel. It reminds me a lot of um, El Det, the, the not yet released game El Det. This is gorgeous. And I love, I love little, the little details even, like when the, um, when the uh, text ticks by, there's a sparkle. If you watch really careful, there's a sparkle as the, um, the cursor, whatever you call it, um, writes out the letters. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. That's what, yeah, exactly. It's it's beautiful. I could have seen that. It's like a shooting star. I could have stared at the schematics all I wanted, and I still wouldn't have been able to imagine this. That dome doesn't look familiar, though. The others must have added it. No matter, we can't just stand here and stare. These pipes must be part of the system. They're so warm. Maybe I could take a short break before I continue. Just for a brief moment. Um. Oh, hey, hello. Galen. Huh. Pretty sure I heard something. Maybe it's time to wake up. You're almost there. Galen's Galen's a really handsome young man. He's a he's a cutie pie. Nana Gide? Is that you? Am I dreaming? I love his outfit. Looks like he would be freezing in that outfit. But I, I'm, I love it. Like the coat and the shirt and the necklace that he's wearing and the sh and the sash. He's this man's stylish. He knows how to dress. <laughs> Nana Gide. Oh my goodness. Hello. So it would seem. That would explain why I'm not freezing. Oh, nice. There's an in-game explanation as to why he's not freezing cold, despite, you know, the really amazing outfit he's wearing that isn't probably particularly warm. And your clothes. No offense, Nana, but you're not exactly who I hope to see. Really, now? And who precisely would you have preferred? I'm sorry, it's just this caravan couldn't go any slower, and the nights are so cold in the north. I hoped you'd be the driver. I hoped you'd be the driver announcing we'd arrive at the gates. That or something more entertaining. I'm afraid this is not one of those dreams. That's all right. I'm glad to see you anyway. How are things back home? Playing Solstice is a bit like reading a book. However, you are often presented with a choice on what to say or do. 
Your decisions will shape the story ahead. Yep. How should I know? I'm a figment of your imagination. I love her outfit too. Love all that. So this is just a dream, how? Oh, that's cool. I can say the same thing. This is cool. You can say the same thing, but your tone. It's the difficult. It's your tone. How should I know? I think on your imagination. Annoying, wonderful sound. I'm gonna say wonderful. I'm gonna, my, I think my character's gonna be a little bit more of an optimistic kind of person. If that's... Oh, wonderful. If that's the case, all I should have to do is... I've got it. I wish that you knew the answer to my question. Yet I still don't know it. You are easily swayed by your own imagination. Broad vision and the courage to wish for more can pave the road to greatness. But only when they are accompanied by the will to act. Otherwise, they are nothing but illusions, turning dreamers into sleepers. Thanks for the advice. Even though it's a bit cryptic, you seem very serious about all this. I'm simply concerned about my favorite pupil. Just remember that some of the mistakes are not worth making. What I really love about the um, the cast in this in this game is that a lot of these characters are people of color or just you know not white. Not that there's nothing there's nothing wrong with you know Caucasians, but I I love the diversity. There's a little bit more diversity in this game than in you know some of the mainstream titles. Um, and I really love the fact that our main character is a person of color. Again, it, 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 this still takes me back to remembering, reminding me of Eldette, which I also am very excited to play eventually. I'm simply concerned about my favorite pupil. Just remember that some mistakes are not worth making. Weren't you the one who taught me that I should be afraid to experiment with which route I choose to follow? Words of new trophy, words of wisdom. Just do what must be done and come back home. And keep your secrets safe. They likely sent someone as well. I'm not really picking up on what's going on, but maybe you're not supposed to know yet. Now, wake up. Wake up, doctor. What? Why have we stopped? Where are we? Are we there? Almost. The dogs found someone in the snow. She's still breathing. Lucky. She's luck really lucky if you ask me. Here I was complaining about an uneventful journey. Let me get my things. Prologue. The arrival. So who is this Asian girl that we meet? Ten days and ten nights of shivering, of chattering teeth, of freezing my butt off. At long last, I had arrived. The city of ice, jewel of the north, smelled of wet dog, sweat, Tears. Oh, like Ferelden. When the gates closed, the city became a winter fortress. No other caravan would arrive for the next three months. For better or worse, I'd spend these months with those who didn't leave for the winter. Those with reasons to stay through the cold. The loneliness got to me fast. The doctor I replaced left two weeks before I came. So are we a doctor? Huh. I didn't even have a chance to speak with him. My patient didn't make me for good conversation either. She hadn't regained consciousness since we found her in the raging blizzard. Eventually, I decided to tour the city to see if its inhabitants were as interesting as I imagined them to be. The caravan pilot was my first choice. A strong, silent type, not much of a conversationalist, but she had done her job as well, job well, so thanks for her. Thanks. Four? You brought us here alive. Frozen, but alive. Who would have thought? I don't know. The other one looked almost dead to me. Her? Oh, fortune's on her side. She'll be fine. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Thanks, but I'd rather not. I trust nobody that'd be a fool to change that. Oh, and why is that? Trust is luxury. Me, living in the North can't afford. Maybe it's different for you southerners. I make no exceptions. Trust no one? Not very social of you. Reasonable attitude. Make an exception for me. A reasonable attitude. My favorite aunt taught me the same thing. Still, aren't you a bit young to have to do a little faith in others? To, to, lose, to have so little faith in others, friend? To think otherwise would be foolish. Fools don't grow old in this city, friend. Well, 
This city really is something else. It's warm, at least. You southerners always do that. When you get uncomfortable, you switch to me to some benign topic. Wow. Still, you're right. This place is special. A utopian garden in the middle of an icy desert? Incredible. I wonder how it's done. Look up. Ooh. I had a feeling it had something to do with the huge sparkly dome. What a sight. Really interesting. I wonder what went into making it. What in the spirits are you doing? Just making some notes on it. It's a habit I picked up during my studies. And done. Important clues and bits of information are stored in your case files. You can access them at any time by clicking the scroll icon in the dialogue box. Okay. How can you people appreciate anything with your noses stuffed in your notepads? The real thing is right in front of you. Clues. The city and its secrets. The city is protected from the harsh northern weather by a special dome. I'm wondering, depending on what we say in our dialogue, if we get different secrets or different clues. Or no clues at all. Ha! Huh, I have no idea. I guess that unnerving humming sound comes from the dome, too. You'll get used to it. Everybody does. That's how this place works. It makes you accept things. Really, now? Is there a story in there you'd like to share with me? We'll spend the next three months locked away from the world, seeing the same faces each day. Don't worry. By the time the winter season passes, you'll have heard more stories than you can handle. I can handle a lot. Tell me, am I right in thinking you're not originally from here? We are in a technological wonder raised in the middle of an icy desert. If there's anyone in this city who is actually from here, it's me. I come from the tribes who inhabited this land long before this crazy contraption was built. The less said about them, the better. Yakon originates from the tribes that inhabit the for north, the, fro the north's frozen wasteland. Okay. If you miss something important, you can always rewind the game using the mouse wheel or the up arrow. You can't rewind past decisions or through other important moments. This that game definitely is very like um, friendly to those who are not used to to uh, visual novels, and I like that. Now please leave me alone. I'm busy. Yakon was as cheerful and perky as a sledgehammer. I love that description. I wonder what the meaning of her name is in her native tongue. Something tells me it's attitude. She was right about one thing though. The girl we found was in really bad shape. Frankly speaking, she was lucky to be alive. What madness made her venture through the icy desert on foot? I'd have to ask when she woke up. Luckily for me, the next person I'd meet met was in a much better condition. Call me superficial if you'd like. Oh! Hello there! Hello, sir! Good morning, officer! And he's an officer. Why was I summoned here? Am I being arrested? He's a ginger, guys! And he's a ginger. Persephone, you are right. This guy is cute. This guy is really cute. You can press escape or right click to open the in game menu to save or quit the game. Your progress is also auto save when you quit. Cass Cassia. Cassia. Nothing like that. Oh, too bad. So, you're the new doctor. I wanted to welcome you to our city. My name is Cassia. I'm the chief of the guard. Not gonna lie, I'm at in uniform. Not gonna lie, it's pretty nice. Thank you. Glad to be here. Pardon my boldness, but you look different from the other guards. I've noticed a few around the market, and they had these really fancy uniforms. Those are the private security of the merchant family, staying behind over the true winter to protect the precious district. The city guard is a separate entity. Honestly, I couldn't care less about a fancy uniform. Before I got this job, I used to be a cell sword. Experience taught me a simple attire works best. Ah, Cassia, the guard captain. Cassia was a mercenary before he became chief of the guard. I'm just gonna call him Kaz for short. Kaz. Honestly, I couldn't care less. All right, Kaz. Besides, you don't look like your last doctor either. Where's your white coat? Touche. Good point. I guess it's not the clothes that make the man. <laughs> exactly. In any case, I hope you'll come in here will prove worthwhile. I hope so too, Cass. I hope so too. Oh, yes. I'm sure it'll be a huge boost to my career. 
it might. At the very least, you can spend your contact of time in analyzing the locals. I'm sure you'll find them odd, eccentric, and generally unstable enough to be worthy of research. So everyone is crazy. Who said crazy is bad? Are you sane? Heartless and surprising. Um, hardly surprising. The circumstances are hardly normal. Take a bunch of healthy people and lock them up in for three months in the middle of an icy desert. What do you think you'll get? How should I know? You're the doctor. You tell me. You should never rush a diagnosis. People are more complex than they seem at first glance. But fear not. As soon as I spot a psychotic killer, I'll inform the authorities. You'll be the first one I'm gonna call, Kaz. I can only hope I won't flip and join the party. About that, remind me to tell you what happened to the previous doctor. Anyway, have a good stay in the city. Feel free to drop by the guardhouse if you want to chat. Sure I will, Kaz. Your every decision matters. The branch icon appears when the current events are a, are a consequence of your early choices and could be different on another playthrough. And please, don't start any trouble. There are so few of us here. It would be a shame if someone had to spend the entire true winter in jail. Ouch. No worries, Captain. I'll keep my troublemaking nature at bay. Glad to hear it. See you around. I already had a good feeling about Cassia. About Cassia. I had always felt uniforms and a sense of humor were the perfect combination. Maybe being stuck in this place for three months wouldn't be so boring as I thought. My next destination was the local bathhouse. I didn't have time to daydream in the tubs, but I couldn't resist at least dropping by and saying hello. The hostess, as it turned out, was even more friendly than the guard. Good day, traveler. Allow me to welcome you to our city and to my bathhouse. Thank you. Please don't be offended by my question, but how come people were so eager to have a look at me on my way here? They were watching from the windows. She is, she is, I love her eyes. She's, she's very, very beautiful young lady. This is a big city. Am I a tourist attraction of some sort? An oddity? Or is there, so, is there something on my face? I mean, you're Southern. <laughs> we, they don't seem to take kindly to people like you on these parks, apparently, or at least there's someone that they gawk at. I can say with absolute confidence that there is nothing wrong with your appearance. It is very pleasing to the eye. And being in charge of the bathhouse, I have plenty of physical specimens for comparison. So you see people without makeup or clothes? That must be revealing. A little too revealing at times. I've always considered myself a bit of an expert on well-being and beauty. I know how to help people's true inner beauty shine. But there are moments when I see that some things get hidden for a reason, and should probably stay that way for the benefit of us all. So I'm exceptionally handsome, and that's why people stare at me? Is that what you're saying? It isn't just that. The weather will cut this city off from the world for three months. Aren't you curious about the people you'll be stranded with? I love how she's playing with her hair. They are just as curious about you, especially as so few of us stayed for the dead season. And since you look so annoying. Galen is really, really handsome. Seems reasonable to me. And you're right, I am curious. So what do I do now? Find my own window to observe people from? I'd be glad to formally introduce you to everyone here, if you'd like. I love curtsying. No, I prefer personal to formal. Oh, sure, I love curtsying. Sure. I love curtsying. I simply love formal introductions. We can all curtsy, talk about the weather, and do some ballroom dancing. It's cool today, no? I see you prefer to do things informally. I guess I can't blame you. You said it yourself, there are only a couple of us left here, so why stand on ceremony? Ah, because it requires a master of ceremony. And since I am the only master of ceremony in the city, I get to remain in your company. Which does seem agreeable. Wow, she really wants, un wants Galen, doesn't she? Besides, if you had spent as many years learning to curtsy properly, you'd like to use it on occasion as well. I promise to give you a chance to do that the next time we meet. I'll hold you to your word. Best of luck meeting people by chance, then. 
I was beginning to think people here were people were chatty and warm here in the north. Back in the aisles, we partied wherever, whenever there was a newcomer, because it was the polite thing to do. Yes, but mostly because parties are fun. Constance seemed like a woman used to a more sophisticated type of entertainment, though, and I must admit her perfume smelled amazing. She does look like she would smell really good, but it's hard to wonder. What did folks in the city do when they wanted to have fun? I guess watching the dome could be an entertaining, if nauseating, pastime. And there was always talking to other people. At least that's what I thought about. And that was what I thought until I met Sam. Not the most social fellow. He was also a dog person. Sam. Oh! Sam's pretty handsome too! So, these are the kennels. I really don't know what I was expecting. Mm. Not so handsome with that, with that frown on his face. So, I'm the new doctor. I just arrived and I'm going around meeting everyone. In truth, if Constance hadn't told me about this place, I'd probably never have found it. I value my privacy. So, um, what do you do around here? I handle the dogs. Yeah, the barking sort of spoiled that surprise. So, you have a couple of nice pups? That's great. I like dogs. I don't have them. You can't own a dog. You just like you can't own a friend. No dog would ever say he was owned. Oh, and what would a dog say? Nothing, of course. But no dog would have such an idea. They're more honest than humans. Honest? Haven't you ever seen a puppy pretend it had stuff in your bed? Despite leaving fur everywhere? It likely wasn't properly told that its pack doesn't share a lair. Don't expect animals to understand human customs. People, however, understand them as well and to try to take advantage of them intentionally. I guess they do. What was your name again? I'm Sam, the city's master of kennels. A pretty important position seeing as all travel here done by dog sled. I do what I'm good at. Well then, you understand dogs? You sure have the right job. Why do you know so much about dogs? What do you mean? I just listen to them. He's a dog whisperer. I can hear them right now, but it's still just barking at me. Where did you learn to understand them so well? It's not a matter of place. You learn to communicate with dogs everywhere. Right. The dogs are getting restless. You should be on your way. Hey, don't you? So diverse and full of life. Yes, the atmosphere of this new city was already starting to sink in. I'm really liking the characters. All of the characters so far are really interesting. Everyone back home thought I was insane for coming to a place where the water is frozen and people wear ridiculous amounts of clothing all the time. Oh, if only they knew. I was still exhausted after the journey, so the final introductions had to wait until the next day. My quarters were surprisingly comfortable, even inviting. Apparently the previous doctor had been somewhat demanding. I asked Cassia if he was the only official around, and if all the powerful merchants I heard so much about had already left the city. He really smiled and told me to expect a guest early in the morning. And some guest it was. Spirits, yes, I'm coming. Hello, who is this? Open up, boy. I haven't got all day. Some of us have to sleep, you know. What? Did your southern sun eat up your smarts? Or are you just dense by nature? I'm the one who's paying you. Open the door. Oh, shh. Hello there, um, sir. Madness. Do they let infants cure, cure people now? You mean you're talking about how old I am? Well, what is it, kid? You can speak, can't you? Anger is unhealthy, old man. Yeah, we're, we're gonna be a little bit of rivals. Anger is unhealthy, old man. As a doctor, I would advise you to remain calm, sir. Too much agitation raises blood pressure. Which can be dangerous at a certain age. Oh, zing. You're a witty one, eh, kid? Well, I guess you'll have to do. They wouldn't have sent someone wholly incompetent. I see the captain already showed you the office. You will be attending to your professional duties here. 
The dish includes your patience and the plants. The old doctor left quite an herbarium, I must say. Ooh, cool. It would be a pity to see it wither because you lack the dis discipline to care for it. I take my obligation seriously, sir. I assure you of that. Do you now? Well, it's good to hear such a thing from one so young. What was your name again? I'm Galen, sir. Ah, yes, of the Geed clan. I'm not exactly, it's not exactly a clan. It matters not. I know of your family, tribe, or what have you. Quite famous, some of you. Very expensive services. But I digress. Do your job right and we'll get along just fine. It's tough, it's fine. And whatever you do, don't trouble me. I may be retired, but that only means I have even more control over what I do with my time. I understand, sir. Good. Maybe you're not as feeble-minded as that ridiculous smile makes you look. And call me Istvan. I don't hold official titles anymore, so don't have so you don't have to serve me. Oh, I'm sure I would have quite a few things to call you, sir. Istvan was something else. I don't think I'd ever met a man his age with so much energy. He was actually in a hurry to go to bed, which made me wonder what he'd been doing the whole night. He also gave me a priceless piece of information. I was to get all my meals at the local inn. Just in time, too. I was getting hungry. When I'm hungry, I'm only half the charmer. Hello there, madam. Are you the innkeeper? Hello to you too, young man. That I am. You're the new doctor, aren't you? Yes, that's me. It must be obvious with what with so few people left in the city and me being the only new face. It wouldn't be doing I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't know who you were, again. Including knowing my name. Especially the name. Mine Slava, by the way. Pleased to meet you, Slava. But what are you doing here at this early hour? Let me guess. The old fool paid you an early welcome visit. That crazy old man. I wake up early anyway. Hey, fools are fine. That crazy old man. More like a crazed geriatric. I'm guessing early stages of dementia. He's still the one who contracted you. So if I were you, I'd be careful not to throw such careless comments around. Um... Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Innkeeper's honor. Just be more thoughtful next time. This isn't exactly the most forgiving city. Right. Bite my tongue. So I've heard. Thank you, Slava. But isn't Istvan your boss too? Isn't it risky for you to call him... What? An old fool? Ha! If I got a silver shilling each time I called him that to his face, I'd have my own palace in the merchant's district by now. If Bond tolerates this, he needs me. I also think he respects me because I, unlike so many others, speak my mind openly. He probably feels a bit sorry for me as well, I think, because of Lev. Is that like her late husband? Who is Lev? My insane husband. Yep. Oh, may I ask what happened to him? Kala, that's what happened. But I'm babbling. I came here, you came here to eat, didn't you? Kala. I immediately liked Slava. Direct and edgy, she also came across as a kind and caring person. I was looking forward to getting to know her better. But also in that moment, my curiosity about Slava's husband awoke. For almost a week, I barely got a glance at him. I began to imagine him as some sort of a lunatic with inhuman attributes that got weirder each time I thought about it. By the time he came to me, expected him to have a tail more than a smell of, and to smell of sulfur. This is not, this is not seduce me. The funniest thing about Lev is that he didn't disappoint me. When he appeared at my doorstep, everything about him proved Slava was right. I'll be right with you. I just need to water these atropa. Man, what happened to you? Did someone beat you up? Someone? If one's an utter fool, can you honestly call him someone? Who did this? They wanted Kala, glory over my dead body. 